This is section 410, Antiderivatives. Our third and final content objective is to work with application problems that involve antiderivatives. When you're done and you are given a particle motion problem, I'd like you to be able to write how you decide whether you need to take a derivative or find an antiderivative in order to solve it. With example 1, we would like to find the body's position s at time t if the acceleration equals cosine t and we are given two points. One of the points is on the position curve and one of the points is on the velocity curve. So the first thing we have to realize is that the acceleration is what we have and we want the position. And we know that acceleration is the derivative of velocity whereas the velocity is the derivative of the position. So in order to get the position we are going to have to go backwards two times. So first we will write down that a, so the velocity function, will be the antiderivative of this plus some random constant. So we have to answer the question, what did I take the derivative of with respect to t that gave me cosine? And the answer to that question is the sine of t plus some random constant. Now because we're going to have to go backwards twice, we're going to put a subscript of 1 on that constant. In order to nail that constant down, we need a point on the velocity curve. So we go look at our given information and then it says when time is 0, I get a velocity of 1. So that means my output will be 1 when my input is 0. Since the sine of 0 is 0, that tells me that my c sub 1 is 1. So now I know that the velocity at any time will be the sine of t plus 1. And my goal is to find the position. So I've got to go backwards one more time and answer the question, what did I take the derivative of with respect to time that gave me sine of t plus 1? Well the answer to that question will be negative cosine of t plus a t plus yet another constant. In order to find this second constant and nail it down, I need a point on the position curve. So when I plug 0 into the position curve, I get a 2 out. So that means I'll have a 2 come out when I plug in a 0. Well, we know that cosine of 0 is 1, so this will be a negative 1 plus c sub 2, so c sub 2 will be 3. Once I have my constant, I can come back up and fill it in and get my position function at any time will be negative cosine of t plus t plus 3. With example 2, we are told the State of Illinois Cycle Rider Safety Program requires riders to be able to break from 30 miles per hour, which is 44 feet per second, to 0 in 45 feet. And the question is what constant deceleration does it take to do that? So that means we are looking for an acceleration that is a constant and we know that k needs to be a negative number. So in order to figure this out, in order to find that k, we have to mine the information here for information that we can use mathematically. So looking here, we've got this 30 miles per hour or 44 feet per second. That sounds an awful lot like a velocity information. So we know the velocity when we start at time 0 is going to be 44 feet per second. And we know the velocity when we end is going to be 0. We also got this information about how far we travel while we are braking. So this information is position information. So we know before we start braking or right when we put the brakes on, we haven't gone anywhere. But by the time we stop, we should have only traveled 45 feet. So notice that we weren't told how much time elapsed in order for us to stop. So this is going to be another variable, but it's still information that tells us outputs on both the velocity and the position curve. So now we have information about position, we have information about velocity, and we want to find that constant k. So in order to connect them, we're going to have to use anti-differentiation. So we know that acceleration is a constant. That means the velocity will come from answering the question, what did I take the derivative of with respect to time that gave me this constant k? And hopefully you'll be able to answer that as kt plus some constant. 
Now the biggest error that people make in answering this question is they do k squared over 2, and that would be the correct answer if we were differentiating with respect to k, but we aren't. k is a constant and t is the variable. In order to find c1 or to nail it down, we have to use a point that we know on the velocity curve. So this particular point will introduce no additional variables, so that's the one I'm going to use. I know that my velocity is 44 when my time is 0. That enables me to solve for that first constant, which will be 44. So now I have the velocity at any time is k times t plus 44, and I've used this piece of information. Now if I go backwards again, that will connect my velocity to position. So I'm going to ask myself, what did I take the derivative of with respect to time that gave me kt plus 44? Well, k is a coefficient, so I move through it. The antiderivative of t is a t squared over 2, and the antiderivative of 44 is a 44t. Now again, because we're doing an antiderivative, we get an entire family of curves and we get that arbitrary constant. We can't figure out what that is until we nail it down using a point from the position curve. So the point that I'm going to choose is the one that does not introduce any new variables. I will get a 0 out for my position when I plug a 0 in for t. So now I know c sub 2, and I can write my position function at any time. That will be 1 half k times a t squared plus a 44t. Now notice that I still haven't figured out the k, nor have I used these two pieces of information. So if I plug this point into the position, and this point into the velocity, I will end up with a system of equations that involves the variable k that I want and this final time. So let's do that, and we will get b e of t will be 0 when I plug that final time in. Similarly, s of t will be 45 when I plug that final time in. So what I've done by using these two points is I have created a system of equations that has two variables and two equations. So in order to solve the system, I can either use elimination or graphing or substitution. And the simplest, in my opinion, is to do substitution. Since I'm interested in finding k, I would like to eliminate the t sub f. So I'm going to solve for t sub f and get negative 44 over k. So now if I plug that in here, I will get 45 equals 1 half k times that negative 44 over k quantity squared plus 44 times that negative 44 over k. Now this particular problem I can now solve on my calculator since there's just one unknown as long as I put it in correctly and then I'll be able to find the answer. So if we look at the calculator we can see here that I have solved for when 45 equals 1 half times k times that negative 44 over k squared plus the 44 times the negative 44 divided by k, and I'm solving that with respect to k. If I hit diamond enter, I end up with negative 21.511. So k will equal negative 21.511, and the units for k are feet per second squared because it is an acceleration. And we're done.